the projections from most experts stated that we might be reaching artificial general intelligence within the decade. And I'm here to tell you today that we might no longer be that far away from that breakthrough. Microsoft, in collaboration with UC Berkeley, just released a paper titled Gorilla Large Language Model Connected with Massive APIs, announcing an AI model called Gorilla. The target here, as always, is to ensure that users get to do a lot more with AI. Artificial intelligence progresses as we go. We've had single-purpose AI systems that are mostly employed in factories today. They're pre-programmed to carry out just a particular task and nothing more. And as much as they make, for instance, manufacturing processes a lot faster than they would be, they still have very limited functions. AGI, on the other hand, so far is a hypothetical type of AI that would be able to perform any intellectual task that a human can with much more efficiency than the average human. AGI systems would be able to learn, reason, and solve problems in a way that's indistinguishable from human intelligence. Until now, anyone would have told you that AGI is still a long way off, but with the introduction of Gorilla, we might see things heating up a lot faster than we expected. The model is capable of executing tasks without being trained on them, just by sourcing data on the internet about those tasks. And it seems that different big tech companies are ready to start jumping into this part of AI advancement that's generated a lot of concerns initially. There's no doubt that the internet provides a lot of resources for the training of these models. But the problem is that many of the contents on the internet have some elements of bias in them because they're from humans who use these spaces. So the danger here is that these biases will be carried along into these AI systems and the implication is something we can't wrap our heads around at the moment. But some experts have described the consequences as being existential. Aside from these concerns, the idea behind the Gorilla AI is genius and will make it a lot more fun to work with these models. With current large language models, you can basically search for any information you want on the internet and it will be able to deliver it. Though there are still some shortcomings, a model like Gorilla will be able to do a whole lot more. It's basically gunning for carrying out your tasks for you. And the fact that this is general purpose is just mind-blowing. From the title of the paper, you see that the AI is connected to a lot of APIs, which brings together all the capabilities of these APIs into one. And when you do read through the abstract, you'll come across the section that stipulates the various sites that were used to test the API call performance on this AI. It says right here, To evaluate the model's ability, we introduced API Bench, a comprehensive dataset consisting of Hugging Face, Torch Hub, and Tensor Hub APIs. And these are very popular machine learning platforms, hosting tons of other AI models and applications that help you with various tasks. And Gorilla also has access to cloud services like Amazon Web Services. API basically stands for Application Programming Interface and is simply software that allows different computer programs to communicate with each other. This way, data is shared and tasks are carried out without actually taking the user through the rigors of the processes required. An AI like Gorilla being plugged into different APIs means that it can carry out a wide range of tasks without demanding much from the user. Basically, you don't need to have knowledge about how to do something before you can do it. This capability is there because the Gorilla models make use of both the resources provided by LLMs and those from APIs. So the process will likely be like how you handle any other LLM out there using natural language. And so you can ask Gorilla to maybe book a flight or make reservations for dinner and it'll be able to. And that's exactly what we have in this section where they talked about the Gorilla interface. Explaining that, it says, Gorilla inference during inference, the user provides the prompt in natural language. This can be for a simple task, like I would like to identify the object in an image, or they can specify a vague goal, like I'm going to the zoo and would like to track animals. The vast network of APIs it's plugged into allows it to surf the internet for the best websites that suit your task and will execute accordingly. And the potential that this model has is very much beyond these instances. Stating what they've attached with the model, they wrote in this part of the paper that our model Gorilla is retrieve-aware, fine-tuned Llama 7B model, specifically for API calls. As shown in Figure 3, we employ self-instruct to generate instruction API pairs. 
To fine-tune Llama, we convert this to a user-agent chat-style conversation, where each data point is a conversation with one round each for the user and the agent. We then perform standard instruction fine-tuning on the base Llama 7B model. For our experiments, we train Gorilla with and without the retriever. From the tests against other existing LLMs like GPT-4 that you'll find in this paper, the Gorilla model did top the charts. And to make things even better, the Gorilla model recorded really low in the hallucination tests when placed side by side with older models. Given that we expect a really wide use of these models, hallucinations seem to be a major issue. Really, you wouldn't know that you're being fed the wrong information until it's too late, especially when you're searching for something you don't know a lot about. Some time ago, there was a record of a lawyer that used ChatGPT and got precedents that never existed. Going through the evaluation process, you'll find that Gorilla was compared with the other models, which they described in the paper as state-of-the-art, even in zero-shot situations. In case you're not familiar with what I mean by zero-shot, zero-shot learning is a type of machine learning where a model is able to classify new instances without explicit training on those specific instances. In other words, it empowers machines to understand and identify objects or concepts they've never encountered before. This is really important for real-life applications of these models. Without it, it would be really difficult for these AI models to keep up with the unpredictable nature of humans. And even if we decide to start an infinite training of these models, the cost will be enormous and we still might be unable to train the models on every possible task and scenario it will be exposed to. So the zero-shot scenarios in AI training are situations where a model is presented with a new class of data that it's not been trained on. The model must then be able to classify the new data based on its knowledge of the classes that it's been trained on. Gorilla AI is a large language model that has been specifically designed to interact with APIs, which gives it an edge over others. And this makes it a powerful tool for a variety of real-world applications. One of the areas I see this coming in is in the automation of tasks. Gorilla can be used to automate a wide range of tasks that require API interaction. For example, it could be used to book travel arrangements, order food, or make financial transactions. This can save businesses and individuals valuable resources that can be channeled into other things. Also, with its abilities, Gorilla can be used to provide customer service by interacting with APIs to access customer data, answer questions, and resolve issues. And this will be a major step up from the traditional service chatbots, which have very limited functions. Already, people are integrating older LLMs into chatbots. This can free up human customer service representatives to focus on more complex tasks. Overlooking the vulnerability that comes with it, personalizing experiences will definitely be one thing that Gorilla can be used for. It can personalize experiences by interacting with APIs to collect data about users and their preferences. This might include your social media handles and the like. This data can then be used to recommend products, services, and content that's likely to be of interest to the user. And this can be used to tailor content to your taste. Although with certain limitations, because Gorilla is still very much relatively new, generating creative content is something that it should be able to do. Gorilla can be used to generate creative content such as articles, blog posts, and scripts. This can be used by businesses to create marketing materials or by individuals to express themselves creatively or get ideas to build on. But there have been concerns about this given that it will be difficult to differentiate AI-generated content from that written by real humans. Even now, AI is already aiding research and development and doing amazingly well at it. And researching information is another area Gorilla will excel in with its vast resources. Gorilla can be used to research information by interacting with APIs to access data from a variety of sources. This can be used by businesses to make informed decisions or by individuals to learn about new topics or even find cures for diseases. In this paper, they did acknowledge that the model is open to some limitations. And it seems that the greatest issue we'll have with this will come from the training data. It's possible that the model will generate biased content due to this. And I did highlight this earlier in the video. We do have some crazy things out there that shouldn't be fed into machines. Hopefully, they'll get a quick fix to this or a way to check it before rolling out. That'll be all for this video. See you in the next one.